What are you doing today? Oh, yikes. Well, actually, there's a sneaky path. Elite, 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 elite here, but, but what about the sneaky way? Sneaky way hits absolutely zero elites, a zero elite five rest site at path or act one. Um, if you're going for a minimalist challenge, this can be the kind of path you're, you're looking for. But uh, this isn't what I would usually call ideal. You get very few cards added to the deck and you end up in act two with uh, a bunch of upgraded commons, but not much else. <clears throat> Moose, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Happy Tuesday to you, too. But when it comes to fighting elites, unless we're willing to get our hands really dirty, um, it is uh, quite spicy. I think a rare relic could potentially help a lot with that. If we're willing to lose 7 max HP here and gamble for something good, there's quite a few rare relics that could easily make... Uh, an early elite feel not so bad. Something like the pocket watch, the fossilized helix, or the incense burner. Just to name a few of, uh, of many that could really, really help. Hey there, too wet. I think a standard just like plus max HP plus seven wouldn't serve us too well to be able to get through nodes like these. You really need cards or relics or potions, something Something instantaneous and advantageous to be able to uh, to bust through here, uh, early elites. If there was a remove two or transform two start here, I, I think that would be a good way to go this zero elite act through the act as well. But looking at these starting bonuses, I think our best odds are probably taking the random rare relic and trying to use it to kill elites or failing that. Uh, maybe it's like a rest site relic, like a shovel, and we can do something really entertaining with that, too. Not that I think digging five times is actually a particularly good use of Act 1, but wouldn't it be fun? Oh, okay. Well, a dead branch is definitely a rare relic, and one that will hopefully allow us to do some stuff to an early elite if we should find ourselves face-to-face -face with one. Hmm at the overall layout here if we go if we go far right we're just hardcore committing to three elites which is scary even with a dead branch to start this branch gives us a random card into our hand whenever something ex is, is exhausted currently that works with the ascenders bane but there are quite a few other cards that will say exhaust that uh, we're going to be able to use to our advantage here dead branch is just raw card draw, essentially, and uh, very few characters are better equipped to take advantage of more cards than the defect is. How many dead... We've been we've been seeing quite a few dead branches. It's a nice, uh, consistent treat for us. In fact, with a dead branch, I'm thinking something like fighting these two elites now as my line. Possibly go visiting through this shop, buying a potion for safety, maybe buying an on-sale card depending on what we find there. Taking a path like through here. Hmm. Choices, choices. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's my most reasonable line. Not too lousy of an opening. Not too bad at all. We'll jab them each one time, I suppose. Leave the Zan unplayed. All we need is a zap and a dual cast. Zap them to death. Hey there, Brizzy Baxin. Hello and welcome. Hmm. First card, Chaos, huh? Without the ability to upgrade it before the Elite. That's interesting. Don't necessarily mind Barrage. Uh, Barrage really wants you to have orb generation to fill the orb slots, but we'll be readily gathering that. And we might even be able to get it from the dead branch in some ways. So Barrage is not necessarily an awful pick. I do love Aggregate as an energy generator, but it's a little bit too early to grab this. Hmm.
There's been so much happening in the in the spire scene. Appreciate those who are more in the know. But it's been very cool to see um, some of the streak records for this game continuing to be pushed by players at the top. Players who have I've respected for a very, very long time. Jorbs, Zeknar, Coach, etc. That said, I do want to keep the bulk of the discussion focused on the here and the runs that we're actually having currently in this copy of Slay the Spire. I think I'm going to take this barrage. We might have, going to have more options to find orb generation here in the store. And we are offered a pretty compelling potion in this strength potion. I think strength potion readily solves our worst case scenario in terms of getting out in the act. And I think I can just barely buy cool headed strength potion here, which allows the barrage to feel a lot better, a lot, a lot better. And as Bonus says, can you predict your first elite with any kind of correlated randomness? Great question. I think if there were one piece of, of correlated randomness information that was particularly valuable, that would be the one. But to my knowledge, there is no way to predict what your first elite is in Slay the Spire. Not easily, anyway. You'd have to, like, track a couple of RNG values across multiple floors to, to even attempt it. But there's no, like, easy rule that you can have. Whereas uh, an example of an easy correlated randomness rule that you can follow in Slay the Spire is if your first combat in Act 1 is a cultist, it means that your first event room might be a combat. If your First combat in Act 1 is not a cultist, then your first, and only the first, unknown room cannot be a combat. Always the elite you want the least. That's that's a good rule of thumb. And that's to how I tend to try to pick my cards, actually. Think about what will happen to you if the elite that you want the least visits you in the middle of the night and then buy the potion that most saves your butt in that situation. which is the Strength Potion. And yes, I'll buy the Cool Headed alongside, ignoring that On Sale Leap, which I think is actually not a terrible card here in Act 1, but um, not the correct card for the moment. And we also get a free upgrade, which is going to go on, yes, the Barrage, which is very much going to try to carry us through the next few fights. That's my hope anyway. So always buy the smoke bomb. Well, honestly, think about it this way. You can't lose as long as you've got a smoke bomb. Right? We're headed this way. Beautiful. So I can go cool-headed, barrage, and block. Oh, that's a card we'd really like to see in the actual deck here, is a, a double energy. Anything that gives energy and exhaust would be beautiful. Hmm, a rebound versus compile driver. Actually, a tougher choice for me than this used to be. Generally, before I was in the no-nonsense, comp compile driver is multiple card draw without an upgraded card, and that's extremely, extremely valuable. But Rebound is also a sleeper, like, incredibly good card on the defect, in the same way that Hologram, I think, is nowadays perceived as such a, a, a potentially game-breaking card, even though it's only a, it's a common, just says get a little bit of block and put a card from your discard pile into your hand, which is secretly the best effect ever. And so it seems unassuming, because the, the numerical value on Hologram is very small. Rebound is almost as good, allowing you to have a lot of control over what is happening with your card draws. 
and also does really good upfront damage at the same time. Nine damage for one energy is, is perfectly on the curve for where Defect wants to be. It lets us do stuff like play this Barrage twice, play the Cool Headed twice, and more. I'm going to grab the rebound over the Compiler here. I'm going to see how that feels as we go through the run. Pretty excited. Hmm. Do I rebound the dual cast? That feels spicy. Strike, rebound, kills this lad. So I can either rebound the dual cast, hoping to draw either cool headed or zap next turn. A pretty reasonable ch chance. Um, but I might also dead draw if I do that, which would be rather embarrassing. But could rebound strike, or I could also rebound nothing, which is. Um, actually, no. Not really. I'd have to dual cast first to do that. I'm going to trust in, in the power of Rebound. Show me what you got, Rebound. Because if we successfully draw a Zap, the fight is over. No! Rebound, I trusted you. Alright, fair enough. Cool Headed was the next card, too, so I even would have... If I hadn't used the... Anyway. It's funny. It's funny. We get through the fight, we pick up a Fire Potion, which makes me feel really, really good about this elite fight that we're about to head into. And heck, what do we got here? Hey there, Bram Hammer. I had a fantastic weekend. And now I'm about to have a fantastic defect run. I adore this Streamline as a companion to Rebound. Streamline and Rebound pair so nicely together, so you can put it back on top and then draw it again at cheaper cost while doing really good upfront damage. I suppose the Claw is also just as good with the Rebound. It's also a pretty good put it back on top of your deck target. It pairs nicely with the Cool Headed. Um, our next boss is Guardian. I think I will take a, a Streamline. I, I tend to find actually that in a lot of situations where Claw would be good or, or decent, Streamline is often better, at least until you get three or four claws assembled, or some kind of serious draw engine. Streamline does really good work. All right, the three centuries. Feels like a relatively reasonable fire potion fight. Maybe killing this one next turn before it attacks me? Yeah, that seems quite reasonable. Barrage will deal 12, don't get three orbs in play, but it's still a really good attack at this point and I will partially block. And our hope is that we can use Rebound or two strikes and a Fire Potion. There we go. Yep, Rebound indeed. To KO this one. I'm drawing two defends next turn. Let's also draw the Streamline. Defend, defend, streamline. Or do I just kill this one next turn? Have an unknown draw. Hmm. Question of uh, which sentry to kill here is a little interesting. Next turn we're drawing two defends, so I could guaranteed block the attack this one will do next turn, which means I would have another draw to to deal with the this one will then attack on two turns from now. But if I focus my damage on this one, I can just kill it immediately next turn with the draw that I have. Therefore, avoiding the attack next turn as well, while also dealing more damage output. But then I'd, I'll have one unknown draw to deal with this enemy. I suppose that's okay. Guaranteed kill sounds rather nice, actually. And the days aren't too bad here with the... Branch, I suppose. Overall, not bad. Not bad at all. So, Bottled Flame could have an attack in our opening hand. That's kind of interesting. That attack could be Sunder. 
I don't think we want it to be Sundered, though. Zuthus, thank you so much for 29 months, almost to those three metric years. I see you at 29. Very good, very good. Cringer, thank you so much for nine months of support. Uh-oh. We start spouting off copper jokes in chat. It's really going to test my metal. I think he... Charge battery is a reasonable inclusion, however, we are a little bit worried about an imminent gremlin knob, so maybe I'll skip this charge battery, even though I think it would be good against the Guardian. And what we'll do is upgrade our streamline and bottle it? Question mark? Hmm. Bottled streamline plus actually feels kind of okay in a lot of fights. That'll be good against potential knob. A little bit iffy been against potential Lagavulin. Good against Guardian, though, too. Sure. Let's give it a try. Otherwise, I'm potentially skipping this relic, which I really don't want to do. Let's make a charge battery a more reasonable inclusion. But I'll, I'll still think that I'll skip this. Uh, we want to keep our skill count low going into this next elite fight. Although the charge battery would help quite a bit, huh? Hmm. Against uh, Lagavulin, that is. 50-50. I'm going to want this card later. Heck, I'll take it. And we'll trust that the upgraded and bottled streamline plus the strength potion can save us if this is a gremlin knob. Which it is. A gremlin knob. We'll happily drink the strong potion. The bonk potion. I think I'll also cool-headed. Uh, that way... The barrage will do more damage. And we get a little bit of block here. Feels like it was worth it. So next turn we have Strike, Strike, Rebound. Which is 8 plus 8 plus 11. 16 plus 11. 27. We are not killing the Gremlin Knob next turn, so I should not play Defend. Unfortunate that we are not killing the Gremlin Knob next turn. That means we're going to get hit for 24 damage, minus the two from the Frost Storm. 22 damage, and six here, so we're going to lose 28 health, and go to 11. Power Potion could save me. Buffer would be something we'd want next turn. Um, how much damage are we short? Just to be, just to triple check here. We do three this turn. 27 plus three next turn. So we're six damage shorts. We do 33. So we're, uh, no, we're five damage short. So to do five additional damage, we would need to get electrodynamics. And that could be next turn, too. Storm wouldn't do anything. Static discharge would actually work, but only if I made it this turn. To get one extra lightning orb, and then I can play Zap Rebound Strike next turn. I think that'll kill him. We also get a random card with Ascender's Bane, too. For next turn, that is. So that might bail us out in that regard. Buffer would save me a few health this turn. Maybe more next turn. Hello World could help, but only if I play it this turn. Sounds like I have more reasons to play the Power Potion this turn than next turn. And given our imminent lots of damage to the face, I have a pretty good reason to use the Power Potion here in this fight. So I'm going to use it here. And we are unfortunately not going to get anything that really helps me. The Defrag does save me a couple of hit points by increasing the block from the Frost Orb. But neither Heat Sinks nor Capacitor does anything here. Echo Form would have also been a save. So, Dead Branch. Let's not get there either. 
And that's okay, I suppose. We just have to accept that this is life now. Yeah, there's just not quite enough numerical output here. We'd have to cool head it into the streamline, and that's only a 1 in 10. Actually, or the barrage, right? Hmm. Since I can rebound strike, I don't suppose it matters much. What about dual cast? Dual cast would do 18. 18 plus 11 is 29. Dual cast, cool headed into dual cast would not be enough. But if we cool headed into streamline or barrage, we actually kill him, I believe, right? Barrage would be 8 times 3, 24. Yes. So there's a 20% chance we win if I play cool headed. And the worst case scenario, he'll like go from 24 to 28. So we actually only take one more damage for the attempt. So 20% chance to save 21 health, 80% chance to lose one health. That's essentially what this gamble is. That's a pretty good gamble. Yeah, we don't get a hit, so we simply rebound a strike. And we take our one more damage. wrong with that. Now we have a bag of preparation for more cards on turn one. We have a block potion and we have a core surge or hello world or turbo. Probably going to be core surge because it works with a dead branch and it's a good card besides. Though I have to say turbo is pretty sweet too. Bottle Streamline got more a little bit more awkward now. I'm actually wishing that I'd bottled the rebound. But when in doubt, I'll take the gold card that says exhaust on it. I think that's gonna be a really good policy here. Huge upfront damage. Artifact creation is gonna help in a variety of situations. And the fact that it does good damage. It's going to be a really nice, too. Centennial Puzzle, yet more card draw. The first time we lose health each combat, draw three. Feeling very, very useful, potentially in this fight, which looks horrifying. Just uh, initially, we've got a wizard in the back, threatening to hit us on turn three, and a screening team of lesser gremlins. That angry and shield. The fat gremlin is particularly problematic, making us weak and frail, making our attacks do dramatically less damage. I can kill the fat gremlin, but then the wizard is going to run rampant here. Especially if the shield gremlin randomly blocks for them. I'll only have two turns to do 26 damage. And with this draw, I really don't see it happening if block gets applied there. So what I think what I, I think what I need to do then, excuse me, is rebound the Gremlin Wizard, streamline the Fat Gremlin here. We do take five from the Mad Gremlin, but we're gonna redraw streamline at one cost. Yeah, I'm gonna need it too, because that's 28 health that I have to deal. So streamline, core surge. Now we can just block down to one gremlin. Felt like a necessary evil taking the five damage on turn one there. Cool. And we're offered another cool headed, a compile driver or a steam barrier. Zero cost block. Ooh. I actually rather like that Steam Barrier, given our current position. We're through any elites this act, um, and we're going into an act boss that is going to test our ability to block consistently, the Guardian. 
Having one more block source, particularly a uh, free block source, does feel like it would help with that a bit. That said, the second cool headed wouldn't be wrong either. A bit more frost would help just as well in the Guardian fight, and the additional card draw is nice for drawing through all the dead branch cards that we're going to eventually be generating. Center Duck asks, is there a rule in how the shield gremlin chooses its target? Yes, randomly, completely at random, which guaranteed means the one you don't want it to shield is going to be the one that shields. It's just how the numbers, you know, just how the emotional math on that works out. It's always going to be the one you'd least want it to. By sheer random chance. Just how the snake plant knows exactly where and when to bite you. because it's random. So, resting at a rest site seems like a reasonable choice. Not necessarily the best choice. We actually do have some safety here with the block potion. But not that much safety. I'll take a couple events here. Oh boy, am I in this moment happy for Steam Barrier being added to the deck. Heck yeah. In fact, we can perfectly block this with Cool Headed and Defend. I guess I'll just zap. Skip the streamline here, set up for the barrage instead. Hologram is a card we'd love to have for realsies in this deck. Just too beautiful. Since it also exhausts. In addition to being a good card. Uh, 8, 14, right? 8 plus 6, yes, 14. Yes, okay. I'll, like triple check my math there to make sure I wasn't going to die by accident. Might be a little bit late in the act, but I don't think it's very unreasonable to incorporate a ball lightning here. Adds a little bit more consistency to this barrage and makes the orb slots fill out really nice and consistently at this point. We're a little bit bloated in terms of raw card count at this point. Uh, I think it's usually wise in Act 1 to add about five cards and then stop adding. But given our current position, uh, I really think this is going to help us out a lot in Act 2 as well, actually. We really do want to make sure this barrage is is putting in the heavy work. Scrape was also kind of interesting there. Draws cards and discards them if they're not zero cost. Which can do some interesting things with rebound. Speaking of, I know that there's another rebound here in this store. Well, I don't necessarily think we want to buy a second rebound at this point. Some very nice relics on sale. Nunchaku could be pretty good energy generation for this deck, giving us one energy every 10 cards we play, and I honestly wouldn't be upset at all with any source of additional energy here. Preserved Insect Meek's Elites have less health. That won't at all help us this act, but definitely, definitely very nice in Act 2 and Act 3. Elite, uh, Defect in particular does struggle with uh, Elites sometimes. And I think that this could really make it easy for us to take, for example, a Black Star or just any non-energy relic from our Act 1 boss. I think removing cards is also very, very, very valuable here. We've added a lot of cards, and so in order to maintain consistency of draw, we really need to start removing starter cards. Getting some of these strikes out of the deck would be a really good way to do that. And a dad joke for the crowd, how do you introduce yourself at a pool competition, a table pool competition. Hi, I'm Billiard. Quietest Guy says, My view is that the defect will almost always die in Act 2 without additional energy. Either four base energy needed or extra energy relics like the flower are needed. I would staunchly disagree on that, uh, on that sentiment. The defect has a lot of ways to make less energy work for them. There's... Thanks to the, the, the card pool that's available to Defect. And there's two primary ways that Defect can do this. One is by using cards to make energy. Turbo is the easiest one. Uh, but Aggregate and to some extent Charge Battery and 
double energy could all be really, really valuable in doing this too. Oh heck, I really do need to... An actual notes. I gotta figure out what the heck is wrong with Failure Bot. I've rebooted everything related to them. I have no idea why it thinks the stream is offline. Anyway, the other way that the defect can also uh, to make a low energy work is just by incorporating a lot of zero cost cards. Beam cells go for the eyes, steam barriers, claws. Although truly those other cards more than claw. And uh, card draw. Saban, thank you so much for 15 months. Twitch Prime every time. So with all that said, what do I want to do here? An Unchaku Insect card remove? Unsure. Kind of leaning towards the insect, truthfully. Although that won't help me now. I truthfully don't need help to get out of it now. I'd like to build towards something later. Algorithm's also very spicy here with Dead Branch. As it's a big block and a new card. So I could see algorithm removal being nice. But I'm going to go with the Insect here. We'll give the Elites less health and try to combo that with our upfront draw to maybe get some instant kills on the Elites, especially with the bottled streamline, right? We're like half, most of the way to killing a Slaver on turn one now. That's pretty valuable. I'm going to have a Schnooze here. I've got enough cards, so I'll take one last event here. Time to spin the wheel. What do we get? We get... Card remove. Beautiful. Best of both worlds. Can you imagine if I chose to upgrade there and then he shivved me? Briefly consider for a moment the world we could have lived in. Choices? Choices. We got some pretty good options here upgrade-wise. Could improve the draw on Cool Headed. We could go for an energy reduction on Zap or Dual Cast. Probably Zap more than Dual Cast because of the um, Barrage. We could upgrade one of our attack cards. The Rebound does three more. The Ball Lightning does three more. The Core Surge does four more, but it's one time only. Or we could upgrade a block card. And if you're ever going to upgrade a block card, I really like Charge Battery as an upgrade. Very good rebound target. Do that. I quite like that. Going into this Guardian fights. What do you got for me today, Dead Branch? A loop. Won't be playing that until the next time we see it, but happy to know it's here. So we should have plenty of health to work with for the Guardian here. Thanks to this block potion. Hmm. Go for the eyes here makes the guardian weak, bringing them from an eight by two down to a 12 by two. So it's like it blocks for four, but then I'll take four damage immediately, which will cause me to draw three cards immediately. Which actually might be a good thing. I'll do it. Okay, we got rebound, but we didn't get the charge battery, but we're more likely to see the charge battery next turn then, so I'll just block this turn. Two lightning orbs blapping away is pretty good damage output in the Guardian fight. Here's charge battery, good. Do some pretty decent damage besides. We only take a little bit of damage here. I actually could have transformed Guardian there if I chose not to play the block cards, but I prefer where we ended up here, admittedly. Put the Frost Orb in front so that our loop now benefits it. Six block from Frost Orbs this turn. 
So, Guardian deals four damage back to you when you play an attack card. That's... Note the phrasing on Sharp Hide. Whenever you play an attack, take four damage. Card Barrage is six damage three times with three channeled orbs. But I only take damage back one time, because I only played one attack card. That's notably different from how the spikers that you'll see in Act 3 work. So uh, don't make the mistake of assuming they work the same as the Guardian does. I honestly don't know why they're different mechanics. It doesn't seem like that was a good idea, but... I am not a Spire Man. Did not invent this game. most of our health, but we got to keep the block potion at least. Hmm. Thunderstrike, buffer, or fission? Well, it's definitely not going to be Thunderstrike, that I can tell you. Thunderstrike is an almost never card. I think one of my lowest rated cards on the defects. Just too expensive and with setup required. Absolute ridiculous card. Buffer prevents the next time we would lose health. That can be a really good way to essentially buy ourselves a turn, especially if we can upgrade it, especially, especially in the later game. Whereas Fission is card draw and energy and it exhausts now, but empties our orb slots, which is very awkward for our Barrage Plus. Hmm. I have no idea, therefore, <laughs> if the Fission's actually that good. Thunderstrike benefit from strength. Yes, also hilariously the strike dummy relic, which brings it to 10 damage per strike. I don't necessarily need to upgrade this fission. You'd be surprised. You'd be really surprised. This actually could be a very good unupgraded fission instance for now until we get focus. I like that I have the ball lightning. Would have been a little better if I'd upgraded zap perhaps. Still pretty good though. <laughs> Even if Thunderstrike did, I think, like, just 20 damage per hit, I don't think I would pick it up here. This is just unplayable, fundamentally, at the moment. Too expensive. You know what? I am going to try this Fission out. I think we can put it to good work, and I really like it with the... Uh, um, oh my, oh my, oh my. Oh me, oh my. What interesting options we have here. So, option number one, the Frozen Core. If you end your turn with any empty orb slots, channel a Frost Orb for free. That's very powerful. Very consistent orb generation. Kind of, it doesn't help Barrage or Fission on turn one, but makes them better on later turns. Bag Prep actually makes that rather awkward. Pandora's Box transforms all of our strikes and defends. That's seven starter cards transformed into who knows what. And I think random cards would actually be very, very good for this deck on average. We've got some solid block options already. So replacing our starters with random stuff would be very good. Or we could simply reduce the number of cards in the deck, snip two strikes with the empty cage. And that would be very powerful as well. But I suspect not as powerful as Pandora's Box. Seven transforms has got to be better than two outright removals, for sure. That said, don't sleep on Empty Cage. It's pretty dang strong at times. I do like this Frozen Core. This is, this is almost a Frozen Core that I'd be happy to take. But I'm going to grab this Pandora's box and ask, what's in the box? And that's a box you can't close right there. That is an amazing, amazing, amazing set of cards. I don't even know how to describe. Every single one of these is fantastic. All of them. It's an entire deck, like, just in and of itself. Even the storm, yeah, with two other powers to go with, yes. Even the storm.
Wow. So, generally speaking, when you uh, when you take a Pandora's box, you're going to want to upgrade a couple of cards pretty quickly if possible. Removing cards also usually recommended, but the, this actually almost wants nothing to remove. I would remove maybe Zap, maybe maybe Dual Cast also, but realistically, we can just not. That's rude. You want me to do what? How about we avoid the Burning Elite that early on? Even with Preserved Insect, this is real spicy-like. Lamau asks, if you have Shard before Pandora's, can they transform into non-defect cards? No. No, the Prismatic Shard will only affect post-combat card rewards that uh, are dropped from enemies and not transforms or stores or anything. However, if you're playing a custom mode or daily run that has a multicolored run modifier of some kind, then those do affect the Pandora's box, and you can get a multicolored Pandora's box in that way. So what makes this, this resulting set of cards so strong is... Partially how it all really works together. Most of these cards either relate to orbs in some fashion or directly produce orbs. The storm is going to make lightning orbs when we play the capacitor or self-repair. The capacitor gives us more orb slots to work with. The consume takes those extra orb slots and turns them into focus, which means the orbs we're channeling are going to be so much stronger. The chill generates frost orbs at zero cost and exhausts, which means the, the dead branch is going to be generating a card. Um, as well as giving us very efficient orb generation. And this recycle is going to allow us to exhaust the expensive cards that we have, sometimes the consume, sometimes a power that I can't play, and to generate a random new card with Dead Branch. What we're going to end up with here is uh, a defect that very quickly sets up behind a powerful set of orbs with focus and then is able to heal each combat with self-repair. Even on base 3 energy, we're going to be able to use the fission and the recycle to end the charge battery to act like we have a lot more energy than we really do. It's going to work together pretty well. I don't think I want to go to this shop with 100 gold, unless I'm really keen on removing Zap. Priority regarding upgrades here, I think my first will probably be recycle to bring it down to zero cost. Zero cost exhaust, give us energy equal to the, co uh, the cost of the card we exhausted, and then generate a new card. That'll essentially be our card draw and energy generation. Other important upgrades include the fission to allow it to evoke our orbs instead of removing them, the consume to get more focus whenever we trade an orb slot, um, possibly the capacitor for an extra orb slot. We could maybe think about Cool Headed for one more draw, but I think it's going to be Recycle first, probably. Monte Kia, thank you so much for 11 months of keeping it cozy. Chill, for example. Just a free Make a Frost Orb, draw a new Frost Orb. Easy. So what is this then? Capacitor, Cold Snap, Barrage? Consume? Cold Snap. Have two Frost Orbs of value four. Then I'm not doing any damage, really. Go Capacitor, Cold Snap Barrage. Oh, heck yeah. Rainbow. Rainbow is all of the orbs forever. One Frost, one Lightning. dark. Unfortunately, the charge battery has gone to a better place. And now we're staring down a 9 by 2 but we have an awful lot of things we can do on this turn that are very silly. Let's start by hologramming hmm. 
hologram barrage? I can actually just hologram charge battery and uh, that actually seems simpler than playing the thingy here. Let's do it this way, actually. Cycle the streamline. Play self repair. Play this. Orbs. Sunders. Just in case one wasn't enough, try double sunder. So 18 plus 8. I think we have a kill here, yeah? Yeah. Okay, well that was very silly. And I think that's generally speaking where this deck is now at it gonna be at uh, as a place is is very silly town. Turtle Jester, thank you so much for lucky number 13. And Canoe Cobbin, thank you so much for six months of keeping it cozy. Ball Lightning Plus is a pretty spicy slap if we wanted to add another attack. Recursion is also interesting here just by virtue of being free. Nice to see randomly upgraded cards from your first combat in Act 2. That's always a good feeling. Hey there, Adonis Incarnate. You know, I think I am going to add this uh, second charge battery. Or sorry, second ball lightning. Not sure why brain said charge battery there. 10 damage to a target of my choice and yet another lightning orb generated. It all feels pretty good. Greetings, bird nerds. Don't wish to hurt you, but if you make me, I will. Does outright 10. I could kill one of them with a fear potion. Streamline, hologram, streamline. And I would take only three here. Otherwise, I could core surge, try to get a new card. I could hologram the recycle too. Ooh, I like that line actually. Just make more stuff. Barrage, there we go. Perfect. Four hits knocks one of these birds out of the sky. Leaving me free to focus on the others. Take exactly one, which is a good thing, thanks to the puzzle here. This feels like an excellent fission turn. Unupgraded, doesn't matter. We lose these orbs, make them back immediately. It's beautiful. You, you're on the ground now. You're all on the ground now. Die. I am beyond all powerful. So. After our first two combats, we're actually up some health. We're kind of just clicking cards wildly because it's fun. And we've been offered two upgraded card, like two for two on getting upgraded cards in our card rewards as well. Unupgraded hologram is beautiful. I was thinking about upgrading the one we had, um, but I'd actually rather have one of each unupgraded and upgraded as a way to fetch the recycle more often. And as even more reason to upgrade this recycle immediately. Other question to ourselves, are we going to this store? Now, I think I'm more likely to go to this one so that I can get to this rest site. So we'll plan on visiting this shop. Um, we'll dodge around here, get a couple of events, upgrade a couple of times, then fight this elite and this elite, but probably not this one. Keep that hollow. Another card remove or a card removal. Beautiful. I guess I am losing zap after all. It's not a bad card, but it is the lowest quality card in the deck. We have two ball lightnings that just do better 
for the same energy. And we have cards we'd rather upgrade than the Zap. So that's usually where Zap ends up for me. Zap Plus is not a bad card by any means. Can be a really good part of a defect deck. But it's not the best use of your upgrade, usually. I think Steam Barrier could reasonably be excluded, but I think it's a nice hologram target. Rather lose this zap, for sure. And if we end up being offered another removal, I suppose I'll lose the... Dual cast at that time. This is not the ideal opener for this fight. Gonna be Oh, there we go. Okay, that's much better. Could even use the block potion to take nothing here. Nothing-ish. It's 27, so we get full block potion value and still keep the centennial. I think I'll just do that. That way, if we find a block potion, we can put it to use and we'll stay kind of at full health. We find another potion of any kind, that is. From this fight or the fight after. Doesn't much matter. We are gonna hologram what? Consume so I can recycle it? Maybe. Horse Surge is excellent here for preventing us from becoming vulnerable when we kill the Fungi Beast. Although note, you have to gain the artifact before the Fungi Beast dies. If you kill this enemy with Core Surge, um, you become vulnerable and then gain one artifact. So don't fall for that. Easy mistake to make. Oh, I think I should have rebound that hologram too. Amplify. Cute. Very cute. Oh! Well, how do you do? Amplify defrag, huh? Cute. Go chill. <laughs> Amp the defrag. Holog this is excessive, but I want to do it. Hologram amplify the capacitor? No, I'll... I will actually take damage if I do that, right? Yeah, I will. Okay, fair enough. It's been a hilarious combat. Get him. There's no escape for you. Hey there, Rocky Z Robot. I will be playing Elden Ring, but I'm choosing to do it off stream. I think there's going to be too much competition on Twitch for streaming it. So I don't think it'll make a good stream game for me. Plus, I don't. I, I would like to avoid spoilers for my own first playthrough of that game. So while I will be playing it, it won't be here. At least not immediately. I might be playing with my food a little bit. Wouldn't you? Second rebound's an interesting option. I think with two holograms, we don't necessarily need it. And indeed, there are plenty of reasons why one might not be able to play themselves, whether it's because they don't want to experience the most buggy, least patched version the game will ever be, or because they don't have a platform that can play it yet. There'll be plenty who want to watch because they can't play. Which I totally respect, and I, I hope that, I mean, there'll be plenty of content in that case. Lots of great channels will be playing uh, 
Elden Ring in the next couple weeks. What is the actual release date of that? Not to derail the conversation too far. Very soon, right? Yeah, the 25th. Aha. Can't believe they scheduled the Elden Ring release the day after. A new character is releasing for Rogue Book. The Fools. They're going to be overtaken. They've made a critical blunder. That's what we're going to be doing on the 24th. Checking out a the fourth character, sorry, fifth character being added to Rogue Book. Very cozy and cute. Deck building roguelite with adorable fuzzy yaks. Hmm. Take one event here. And I regret it. Ow. My face. Fortunately, I don't think we'll need that health. We have plenty of recovery thanks to the... Okay. Plenty of recovery thanks to the power of self-repair. That's yeah, fascinating. Hmm. It's like almost doable. You go ball lightning and vision, I suppose. Actually, we'll core surge as well. Get some new cards here. It's not a very good new card. Let's hope you know. Probably should have done his rebound that uh, charge battery plus. Okay, we're done. Just rebound nothing. Take a little bit of damage here. And we do get attacked again on this turn, but we can simply hologram our charge battery multiple times as necessary. I'll also here hologram recycle. Recycle this three cost creative AI we just created. And uh, have some fun with that, you know? Life is good. I think that's the takeaway here. Life is very good. So if you recycle an X cost card, the energy gain is equal to X. Giving us four energy for recycling that multicast there. Thunderstrike? <laughs> Get him, Thunderstrike. Actually, wait, no, we'll we'll take damage if I play this. No. Curses. Dual cast first here. Should have been barrage first, actually. That's, that's alright. They would have gained a uh, block, but I can No, can't even hologram it. Dang it. Wanted to believe in you, Thunderstrike. More Maxell with the fruit juice here. And a real thunder strike if we want one. Hilarious. Well, I like that idea, Enrique K. Just add Channel 1 Frost onto Blizzard as a card. I don't think Blizzard necessarily even needs a buff, but... I think that would make it a lot more broadly useful. Unfortunately, I think this deck has no chance of becoming a Blizzard tech as cool as that would be. I think it's a, an ice card. But... Not good enough. Do I take a second cool headed here? That's my immediate question to myself. Yes, we have lots of frost orb. Uh, we have lots of focus, we have lots of orb slots. We have lots of desire for card draw, so I think a second cool headed fits in really nicely here. Helping really make this barrage slap a little bit harder. And I think it is time we upgrade this fission. But we don't necessarily need to upgrade it. We, we could maybe get away with upgrading consumer capacitor first. Uh, I think it'll be really beautiful if we can actually get use out of the orbs as we get rid of them. Let's we'll go ahead and do that. Oh, and war paint upgrade two random skills. I really don't care what this hits because we have no defends in the deck. Cool headeds are good, consume is good, capacitor is good, chill's good, it's all good. Cool headed and hologram. Beautiful. I'm very happy with that. 
Even though the holograms no longer exhaust in a way that makes us a card with the dead branch, I don't think it matters much. Oh, and beautiful, beautiful Vision Plus is here. I don't have a lot of orb gem this turn. Thinking of recycling the barrage? We could go streamline hologram, streamline, kill the back slaver here without even having to use the fear potion, which is very nice. Thank you, bottled streamline. Actually paying off here in the fight we talked about, along with the preserved insect, to crucially get us that turn one kill that makes this fight so much easier. Recycle barrage. Skullfighter says, does the preserved insect make the elites physically smaller? Yes. They are tiny and adorable. And it is beautiful. Oh, and Chill is here. Beautiful. Beautiful Ur, in fact. So let's go Fission first. We can regenerate the orbs with the Chill. Amazing! Alright, scratch what I was doing before. Now I'm recycling this force field. An upgraded fission. Beautiful. Ah, uh, let's go consume. Play the self repair. We'll go bowling plus on you. We'll cast. Well, that was a dang good turn one, ultimately. Thank you, Dead Branch, for making that extra spicy. Extra, extra spicy. Move down the battery. Oh, yeah, definitely don't take any damage. So we end up beating the slavers with no damage taken, healing seven, and no potions used. And now we have a lantern for energy on turn one. So, going back to the start of the act, the Pandora's box. Why did I think this was going to be effective? The answer is that we're constantly getting just some kind of massive card advantage, so to speak. We're getting extra energy per turn from the recycle and extra cards per turn from the dead branch in a way that just overwhelms our foes very, very powerfully. And now we're able to stockpile relics, stockpile upgrades, get everything important removed. Let's go. Oh, I love Toolbox here, giving us more options on turn one. Doom and Gloom's kind of a cute inclusion. Gives us a Dark Orb and a, an area damage option. Although, as, given how that Slaver's fight went, I don't feel as compelled to add such a thing. Could remove a card, but as we talked about, our worst card is Dual Cast, and it's not a particularly bad card. Bullseye could be nice for making our Lightning Orb steal more, but I'm going to take this Toolbox, giving us our choice of colorless card at the start of each combat. A lot of these cards say exhaust, some of them say zero cost on them, and that is going to allow Dead Branch to do some really beautiful things. I'm going to employ Chrysalis here. Three random skills that cost zero. Put them in the draw pile. Is this good? Not sure, but I want to try it. Got a free vision, and those have been paying off pretty well. I like it. I can hologram the recycle. Good. Get rid of this for now. As much as I want to play this self-repair, I'm pretty sure I need to play the ball lightning to kill these birds quickly. This fight gets very out of control if you cannot thin their numbers swiftly, which we are fortunately able to do here. Oh. Grab the Recycle, get rid of the two-cost card. Reconsume feels good. Let's 
Mission to draw more cards. Chill to get more cards. Defrag. Should have been stormed first, that's okay. Alright, something like that? I don't know. Deck is very strange. Oh, well, that helps. Gotta find the self repair, though. There you are. Drink the fruit juice to pick up the focus potion. Love that we have 74 max health. And love that we're being offered another hologram unupgraded. Just sheer card draw advantage. Amazing with this recycle. Turbo also not bad at all for instant energy gain. But I think I'm going to prefer this uh, hologram, quite frankly. Keep pulling cards back into my hand, letting me get the energy generating card over and over and over again. Yes, please. Gearing up for the champ fight here. This is a long fight of scaling. We're going to upgrade both the consume and the capacitor before champ. Yeah, they, they, that's why we buy the toolbox. Man, purity is pretty spicy too, actually. Hmm. Apotheosis upgrades everything. Most of the important stuff is already upgraded. Let's take a purity here, letting me reroll several cards in my hands. Whatever those cards might be. We're gonna use the consume to beat the Book of Stabbing rather than the streamline here. Oh, white noise. I'll take a Hello Worlds. this too. Back the consume, recycle the consume. Well, this is very silly. Definitely want loop here. I think we want bullseye to make this lightning orb do substantially more damage. I probably want Capacitor. Put those three in play here. Oh, Force Field, what a lucky find here. Zero cost block 12. Thank you, Dead Branch. That is spicy. Book never had a chance. Let's hologram the self repair, put it in play, then play fission. We're done. Get a mango. 14 more max health, putting us into the really chonky range of uh, of defects. That's beautiful, considering this run took a minus max HP to start to get the uh, dead branch. Real focus here in a defrag. I think that's an excellent compatriot to our consume capacitor. Um, and a great sort of end game for making sure this has lots of focus. Beautiful. Still gonna upgrade the capacitor first, though. Poor Champ is a fight that's all about preparation. Champ gives you lots of time to ready yourself. And put your powers into play. Well, he kind of ignores you during the first portion of this fight. But once you bring him below half, that's where things get spicy-like. Let's hopefully this reprogram. Just gain one strength and dexterity for this fight. So our goal here is to put all of our focus generating powers into play. As well as to use recycle to get rid of cards I don't necessarily want. Like the stool casts. Interesting. That's better. Like 
playing this storm. Sure. That way I don't draw it again at least. You can consume a couple of times and then recycling it lets us have orbs with a real impact to them. Keep that fishing for now. And I think this is where we'll stay. Four orb slots with this much focus. Closer towards half is kind of the ideal to strive towards. Just in a halfwards direction. Oh, here we go. This must be the turn. We can do a hell of a tempest this turn. If I recycle the reinforced body, we'll have eight energy. Oh, and a buffer. Beautiful. Although I think I might just want a Tempest here. I guess I can hologram, recycle, recycle this buffer again. You know what? That's actually very entertaining. See another different card and more energy to Tempest with. Go! Seek vision. My turn's not over. Fool. Grand the recycle. Keep generating energy. Just get more lightning orbs down. Nice try, jump. More like lump. GG. Ruben, thank you so much for the 19 months of support. Whoa. Seek is very, very nice. Alternately, Meteor Strike is a pretty good recycle target if we just want a ton of energy on our turn. We have a lot of access to that recycle. It'd be surprisingly playable, but Seek is the easy, no-nonsense pick. We put a part card from the draw pile into our hand, then add another random one from Dead Branch, which has generated so far exactly 100 cards. Pretty cool. Last but not least, Creative AI would give us slow but steady scaling in fights. I think we don't need it because we already have a really good answer to the late game fights in this capacitor consume defragment stuff that we're doing. Really all we need is either an amplify or just one more copy of capacitor to make this really, really, really slap. Uh, even if we don't get it though, I think we'll be quite fine. That said, what I just said would be good cause to take creative AI. So creative AI can give us the echo form or just outright the amplify, uh, sorry, the uh, capacitor or the defragment or loop that we need. But I will take the seek I will contemplate the Sneko Eye. I will stop contemplating the Sneko Eye. Actually, not that bad. Cards drawn would be a random cost. We start combat confused. A bit awkward. We want more base energy. The Fusion Hammer gives us that. We can no longer upgrade at rest sites. We're not necessarily going to get to a lot of rest sites in the next couple of acts, but it would definitely hurt to be not able to upgrade at Defragment or Seek. Last option, maybe not the worst option, the Sacred Bark. Simple but effective. Double the effectiveness of potions. Um, currently, the deck is already able to handle most threats, and if we just want something to tackle the late game, what about a potion that says gain four focus? Very interesting. I think, I think both the Fusion Hammer and the Sacred Bark are very reasonable. 
especially because with the fusion hammer, um, resting up to full health is quite reasonable anyway. The more I think about it, the more this is a, just a very reasonable fusion hammer. But I think the sacred bark would be doable too. Snackawai feels like an unnecessary risk to me. I'll go with the hammer. Hey, hey everyone. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel to do what I love every day. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. Dead Branch almost always likes more energy. That does mean we don't want rest sites as much this act, but guess what? We barely get to visit them anyway because the Burning Elite says we have to go this way. Just a lot of regular combats. With 150 gold, I don't think I'll be going to a shop here. We have nothing really important to remove. So we'll start out over here and then path up towards the Burning. I guess we could also go this way. Elite, rest site, elite. We can recall here or rest as needed. Actually, that feels pretty good too. Okay, we'll go this way. Definitely a fight for Dark Shackles, letting me block one of these nerds. You nerds. Dead Branch at this point just generating so much energy. Almost unfair. How much energy we're getting we're able to get, and the things we're able to do with it. Holy moly. Sunder. You can do that too, yeah? Recycle the streamline, uh, the scrape. Bonk. Beautiful. What a turn. able to navigate this fight without losing any health, really. Let's see why that wouldn't be very easy to do. Boop. Wonderful. Go for the eyes or compile driver. We're currently only generating two types of ore, although Dead Branch can always make a third or fourth. The Compulgiver could be okay, but it feels kind of unnecessary to us. I'm not taking any of these cards, and we're headed this way. That's the goal. Oh my! We're offered the Warped Tongues. Very interesting. Warped Tongues would allow us to upgrade a random card in our hand every single turn of combat. Or... We could take this one-time opportunity with the Fusion Hammer to upgrade a card of our choosing, getting either Seek or Defragment upgraded. Would likely prefer the Seek upgrade. The one focus on the Defrag really doesn't feel that important when I've got Consume Capacitor as a... as a way to gain stuff. Let's just have the Seek upgraded here. With no way to, to remove that pain in the even vague future, I wasn't too interested in uh, in taking the tongs, ultimately. Let's see, seven thorns? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Hey there, we'll lock. Defect runs that don't involve orbs can definitely be one of the most challenging types to get in Slay the Spire, but they can also be very, very fun. Defect has a lot of tools for survival and for offense that don't involve the orbs. 
On the survival side of things, Defect has some really good block cards. Charge Battery, Leap, Steam Barrier, Force Field, Equilibrium. If you can gain Dexterity, either by an artifact such as the Kunai or the Oddly Smooth Stone, or by using the card Reprogram, then those cards can be really good ways to block uh, outside of Frost Orbs. Also, highly recommend the card Go for the Eyes to weaken your foes. That makes a big difference, too. On the offense side of things, um, Defect has a number of attacks that can do fairly well if spammed or played multiple times. Streamline that we're showing off partially in this deck. Claw played in duplicate or triplicate. Heck, um, Beam Cell especially helps out with that, too, as an option. And then called, cards like All for One can provide draw engines. You can also win such a run by assembling an infinite combo, which is a bit of a daunting challenge, but a lot more doable with a card like Recycle and lots of card draw. It's also possible to use Meteor Strike as a way to win such a run. Meteor Strike and um, Hyper Beam, the two powerful defect attacks that don't require focus. You can play those over and over again. You may be able to have a good time as well. All right, well, my turn is now over. So there's a, there's a few ideas for you, potentially. Every specific implementation is going to have to be unique in how you approach your your defect run that has no frost or focus or any of that, but it's definitely doable, definitely winnable, and I encourage you to keep trying, because it's possible. It is possible. Alright, what is happening in this fight? We're doing some weird things now. Get rid of this, I guess. I'm just gonna play all the stuff. Creative a high, deep rag, consume. You got it. That's how you do it with a spiker. It's very entertaining. Keep getting offered these compiled rivers. I think I'm going to continue to say no to them. Because they are of no use to us here. Bonus merchants. With a Prismatic Shard on offer. Intriguing. I think Purity is also very good here, letting me exhaust up to three cards in my hand. But given that the run is already deep in the Silly Town, I'm going to pick up Prismatic Shard here, allowing my card rewards to contain colorless and other color cards, which may or may not be good at all. It's really up to us to find out. Whether, whether it's good or not, you know? Let me change his attack intent whenever struck. We're gonna avoid striking them too much. It's best to keep this fight controlled where possible. Oh, oh my. So, uh, I said something about control and... I don't know. I feel like 
feel like we're no longer in that territory. Fine. Give me these. Oh my. Begin the blapping. in a potion can be rather fun. Answering blow. Thank you, Prismatic Shard. Pretty happy with the double energy here. We double our current energy and it exhausts, creating a new card. Even though it's unupgradable, it really doesn't matter. It's going to be lots of free energy. That's what we love. I guess I will go double orb potions. Scaling up our orbs even more. Actually, the potion of capacity is especially useful for the late game fights. Do I want a Hand of Greed? Can I can I make 20 gold off Reptomancer? I suppose we'll find out. Hand of Greed tragically doesn't work on the daggers, though. In true sadness style. Well, how do you do? What an excellent dead branch draw against Reptomancer. Electrodynamics right at the correct time. You just blap all those daggers into nothingness. That's filthy. That's filthy. Just completely, unacceptably, unreproachably filthy. And again, why not? Oh, I have one Electro, one two Electro better. Oh, also I have 16 energy this turn, by the way. And yes, I am going to gain 20 gold. <laughs> I have 60 energy again. All right. Yeah. Good stuff. Good. Good talk. Well, this deck is very silly now. A real Electro manifested almost. Allowing us our lightning orbs to hit multiple foes. I think that'd be particularly good against the spear and shield in Act 4, but could also be invaluable against the Donu and Deca boss. That is pretty good recycle target in general. We'll pick it up. I like it. And we get nine gold for taking it. Since I'm at full health, we'll simply recall. Getting our red key. And our next elite will be the giant head. Will he fare any better than the poor Reptomancer did? I have to say it seems improbable that he will. Improbable? So let's just play the streamline here. We'll keep this transmutation for later. Just hoping we draw an energy generating card on turn one, but wasn't to be. Ooh. Double creative AI, anybody? Alright, alright, I'm in. That's one way to beat Giant Head. Ramklov, how do you beat the Giant Head's countdown? by winning just in the neck of time. So, uh, we're currently hologramming, right? Let's get the creative AI and recycle that thing. But I accidentally came up with a good joke. Dang it. Maybe next time. The rebound, this recycle. Seek to put it back into my hands, I guess. Bravo. 
Echo form, you're late. Uh oh. Hmm. Just lock this way. Kind of like a build your own reinforced body. Almost. Transmutation, I trust in you. What do you got? There is a hand agreed. Heck. One of that. Get a kunai every time we play three attacks in one turn, gain some dexterity. That goes awfully, awfully well with Blade Dance which adds three shivs to our hand, each of which exhausts, and the cumulative sum of which gives us dexterity to work with. That's pretty potent. Alternately, there's all for one, getting back any zero cost cards from the discard pile. Mostly just recycle. I'm taking this blade dance. It's gonna be very, very silly with our relics here. And we have to take the blue key over the blue candle, which is a pretty bad relic anyway. Sweet. Zach, thank you so much for three months of a sub report. Keeping it cozy. Secret technique. Yeah, I can seek for seek. That sounds grand, actually. But heck, I already have seek. So now what? Now you seek for double energy and fission. I believe. And for recycle. And aggregate. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, this is about to get very silly. I now have 14 energy. I now have 26 energy. Wait, I can do better. All for one gets back. Recycle, which I can recycle the... Reinforced body. <laughs> oh dear. gonna do with 50 energy. Unlimited power. Oh wait, shoot, no. Oh, that was silly. I forgot there was a steam barrier in my hand. That's alright, we'll do it this way. There we go. Energy acquired. But what can I do with it? That's right, nothing. Power. So, what can we hologram that is helpful here? Can't get Meteor Strike in play again. Tragically, but we can hologram the Recycle at the very minimum to try to create new cards in a helpful way. I've successfully done. Good. We'll guess, just, guess we'll just focus on getting these orb slots filled with something. Whatever that something might be. that scrape because I didn't want to discard my blade dance but instead I failed to draw the blade dance hmm. go ahead and dual cast that
NG80 asks, if you recycle an X cost card with chemical Xs, does that get re uh, reflected in the energy you generate? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that actually does that does not work. That'd be a good one to test, though. My guess would be no. Order there. Oh, good. Go ahead and rebound the blade dance. That sounds grand. Draw it again. artifacts, so we could even hyper beam. Well, this is beautiful. We're scaling our dexterity incredibly well. With the kunai, we're doing absurd things. With the blade dance, life is, in fact, pretty good here. Dexterity this combat. And we're offered another Recycle Plus. Or another Hologram. I'm personally all about this second copy of Recycle. To let us continue to try to generate new cards. We do have to worry a little bit about Time Eater here. This Time Eater will not like our card spammy, absolutely monstrous shenanigans. Um, but we can rely on Orbs with Focus to really help with that. I think. That's my hope, anyhow. Capacitor, Electro, Chill. My goodness, these cards are insane. Bird Eye for Scry in addition to all this, or a Body Slam, which could do literally so much damage. Man, both of these are incredibly good. Problem is, we don't have a, real, a way to really accumulate tons of block other than gaining dexterity. Helps with the kunai, works with the kunai, great rebound target. I mean, I'll take it. Sintonir says, am I right to think that with Dead Branch, your draw pile, discard pile, and hand stay the same throughout the combat unless the enemy adds statuses, or are you missing something? There are cards that generate multiple additional cards. For example, Blade Dance creates shivs. Not only does Blade Dance not exhaust, but then those shivs exhaust to add new cards. So playing Blade Dance can permanently increase the number of cards. There are also powers which do not exhaust, but also still don't go to the discard pile when played. They effectively attach to your character. So these cards reduce the number of cards in the draw, discard, etc. when Played. So there's ways to both go up and down. This deck has both, uh, which makes it really difficult to, like, get a handle on where we're going to be at numerically. So we could have any number of cards. Let's seek for... Let's see if we can break Body Slam here on turn one. Just right now. Instantly. Instantly. 
What do we got? Stack is here. Twist. Recycled stack. Later. Again. I can holy bond hologram body slam a third time, but I'm gonna hologram the recycle instead. It's machine learning in play. Okay, that wasn't a particularly busted body slam, but that's only on turn one. I think things change when we gain numbers that are bigger. Yeah, for example, this turn starts to get a little bit busted. Based on what I am seeing here. I go double energy, then reinforce body, and then... Oh. Oh my. Oh my. Stack. Interesting option in a body slam deck. Zonard Stark, thank you so much for the 31 months. Support is welcome, even if it is a little defective. Stack is oddly tempting. Actually pretty good against the time eater. I will include one stack plus. Greetings, jawworm nerds. I have made all of the energy. A lot of weird things I can do here. More card draw, though. Dead branch? Okay. Well, 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 well. Holy moly. We are now defect corruption dead branch. And that is. I think I meant to do this as a seeded run. Like, not this seed, of course, but this concept as a seeded run. And to run into it randomly is so cool. So, so cool. Don't forget, we have Seek in the deck, too, so we can find. The hacking corruption so very easily here. There it is. Let's go. Dead branch corruption defects. It's happening. You better believe it's happening. Rebound the buffer, you heard me. <laughs> uh. 
Oh, yes, the power. I'm invincible. Hmm. Okay, I'll take another hologram. I'm supposed to be a burning elite. But how do we beat Time Eater? Maybe this is where one of the uh, potions comes in. This is our kind of bad matchup, you could say. Our weakest. Although, from the looks of it, I'm about to give this man a really bad time. It's time to your person. Yeah, I'd say so. Storms next turn. Might take damage on this turn. Ha! Not even attacking me. Easy. Easy. So the no block downside is inapplicable. And now I will seek for corruption. And the hunger. Perfect. We gotta bring Time Eater below half health. If at all possible. Um, scrape Corruption works the way you want it to, which is very cool here. Although those aren't the things I wanted to draw. Lots and card draw. Okay. Ouch. You heard me scrape corruption. The power. Okay, so you're healing to half here. Oh, that was my vision plus, actually. Still good, though. Gain a lot of dexterity here. So four decks. And of course, we're still Dead Branch Corruption, so... Kind of do what we want here. Ball lightnings. All right, GG Time Eater. I think Time Eater was our hardest fight, quite frankly, so the rest of this run is going to be very silly. Just beautifully, beautifully, very silly. Is there any 
ones are here. No sign of recycle yet. So it looks like we're not going to have much of a turn here. There's Body Slam, though. So body Slam. Hologram. Rebound Body Slam. Get some decks going here. Uh-oh. Thanks. Fair enough, though. Get a little bit beat up before our powers are in play. Is this the right time to corruption? I'm not actually convinced that it is. We can do so much more. gonna make it awfully easy for me. Double the corruption, that's right. You guessed what I was gonna do. City wins the race against the Awakened One, generally. That does look a little trouble, but not too bad. Two more Frost Orbs, and one more uh, Consume play. So now I'll play the Corruption. Recycle this self-repair. We're healing to full uh, with the uh, thingy anyway. Hardly matters. Oh dear. All for one Corruption? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well that's just silly. Seems flagrantly unnecessary, actually. Oh dear. Storm. Double the heat sinks. Play the loop. Twice also. Yes, the power. You fool. Yes! Fools! Fear the power. The shenanigans are off the charts. This is the coolest defect run I've ever had, potentially. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. 
GG. On to Act 4. Sleeping time. Don't get the combos unless you try. That's the takeaway here. And boy, am I ever going to take extra orb slots. Runic Capacitor says start each combat with three more. Beautiful. Simply beautiful, based on what we're doing. Amplify could have been nice, too. Do I take an Ancient Potion to allow myself to not become vulnerable against Heart? I think that's a really good choice overall. With the extra orb slots, I no longer need this Potion of Capacity. We'll go Ancient Potion, Focus Potion for the final battles here. And we are going to have a very, very silly time. Yes, please, to card draw. Just a very silly time indeed. To make room in hand. Perfect. Is corruption fission? Recycle fission? Corruption recycle, actually. Yes, here we go. Let the shenanigans begin. Amplify. I'm retaining my hands? Okay, hold on. Hold on to it for another turn then. Right. <laughs> I knew that was going to be there too. Double the defrag. Uh oh. But my face though? Hmm. Buffer makes a slight difference here. Not really, though. Probably should have doubled that buffer. I think I could reasonably agree with that. I'll take a bit of a hit here. possible for me to kill the Spire Spear here. It's just ball lightning streamline, right? We deal 27 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Actually, wait a minute. Uh, 42. 69. What's another 12? 81. No. We do not have a kill, even with Streamline, Ball Lightning, Focus Potion. If the enemy didn't have Artifact and Bullseye could work, then we could talk, but as it stands, that's not how this goes. But if I can do 69, that means I can kill the Spire Shield. my damage, then I'll win the fight. Get one more focus for the last battle from the data disc. And a defect favorite, Feel No Pain Plus. Yeah. Actually, Blind's pretty good here. Although, Secret Weapon, Core Surge, no! Why did I bother with this potion? Alright, fine, I'll take the blinds. I'll take the blind. 
But no cards that mm, artifact me. Do I? I could, though. Hold off on that for the moment. Gotta remember not to forget. Yes, gotta remember not to forget to use the potion. Oh, we did draw Core Surge. Speed of death kind of shredding me here. A little bit rude. But not unwelcomed. Use this now, and I guess I'll hologram blind one more time. Keep the heart weak for a really long time. It means we'll take essentially no damage through the first attack cycle of heart here. It's be 33 and 1 times 15. Easy enough numbers to block while we get set up here with, uh, oh, I don't know, Corruption Feel No Pain? Hypothetically speaking. That seems pretty good. It is time. Um, let's get that reprogram back one last time, though. Here we go. The blockening. Yes. It's happening. It's happening. Storm, storm, storm. Oh, it's definitely happening. What is it, you might ask? Great question. Definitely playing that bullseye too. Multicasts for X cost. I like it in theory. In practice, I want your energy. Yes. Three lightning orbs whenever I play a power card. More bullseyes. Thunderstrike is here. My god. Get him, Thunderstrike. It's beautiful. It's absolutely just beautiful. None of that turned into block? Really? Interesting. Kind of terrifying, actually. Yes, I can even play the Meteor Strike. Here we go. Good times. Burp. Well, I'm sorry, what's that? You want me to play it again? Okay. Do my best. Can I? Oh, no, I can't. Not quite. Dang. Along the lines of what I was looking for. GG, Mr. Hart. GG. 
Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.